so lord. Okay. Computer is acting silly. Okay. But praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we know we're in hard times. We know things are happening all around the world and have been for quite a while now. If it isn't the dead birds falling in BB, Arkansas, or fish dying and floating to the top of the water in different streams, uh, even things dying in the ocean and coming up. Uh, we see all different things, Father, that is affecting our earth. And Father, I know that you are trying to say, pay attention to me before it's too late. So, Father, forgive us forgive us and forgive America wake the people up before it's too late all over the world not just here in America but all over the world I'm asking you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Amen okay as I am coming to you on the no news the other day, I heard about, down in near Austin, Texas, about a herd of cattle. There was 18 head of cattle that this Jerry, a uh, man named Jerry, had, and he turned them loose um, on nice green grass. And... that grass was produced in Sinai and killed 15 of the 18 head. Here, I'm going to read the article and then I'm going to put it in a link down below for you to look at. CBS tried to say it was a modified um, grass created by G. M -O. So, I, I want to read this article. It says, A herd of cattle in central Texas has mysteriously died after eating uh, generous, uh, genetic modified grass. CBS News reports this past week, and they did. I heard them. Plymouth Preliminary tests have revealed that the grass began subcreting producing cyanide gas, killing 15 of the 18 head of cattle owned by Jerry Abel of E-L-G-I-N. It says, when our team first heard when our trainer first heard the bellowing, he thought our pregnant heifer may have having a calf or something. Abel told CBS, but when he got down there, virtually all the steers and the heifers were on the ground. Some were already dead and others were already convulsing. It's unclear why the grass which is called Tifton, T-I-F-T-O-N, 85, and which Abel says has been on his farm for years, suddenly began producing poisonous gas. Dr. Gary Warner, the El Elgin veterinary and cattle specialist who performed the 15 cattle uh, suggested that Texas currently current drought might have introduced bad 
badly with the grass. Coming off the drought that we had the last two years, we currently considered it was a combination of events that led us to this, Warner said. Other for farmers in the area have tested their own Tafetone 85 grass and have also found that it also had been giving off Sinai. But while scientists from the U.S. Department of Agriculture performed father tests on the grass, a debate has been brewing over whether the grass was genetically modified labeling given by CBS News is actually correct. While CBS initially called Tefton 85 a genetic modified form of Bermuda, has cha challenged the record according in its use of GMO label. The Tefton 85 is a hybrid between African Bermuda grass Tefton 68 and a different hybrid produced at Tefton, Georgia, writes Linda of Extreme.com. Last Saturday quoted the Texas A&M Ag Life Extreme Services. Hybridization has been produced by farmers as long as plants have been grown and is not the same as GMO. And I agree with that. I I know that um, cross cross pollination is totally different than genetically modified things. Dr. Larry Renman, a Texas State Future Specialist with Texas A and M, confirmed via blog posted that Teflon is indeed a hybrid, not a genetic modified organism. That it has been used by farmers since 1972 without incidents, and the combination of the current drought and the cattle stressed state may have contributed to their death. Random also offers tips to help ranchers use Teflon 85 to feed their livestock safely. Uh, there's a report saying that if you um, cut it to bale for hay and you let it lay out there in the field and dry, then it will kill this thing that causes the cyanide gas. You can bale it for hay and then give it to your cattle. Um, if I seen 15 head of my cattle die, I don't know, but uh, maybe they do know what they're talking about, about that. Um, a hybrid is a plant made from cross-pollinization, written, wrote one CBS News user. Cross-pollination helps without human intervention every day. I encourage you to learn more about where your food comes from. Visit a farm. So cross-pollinization happens every day. Every day uh, when the flowers are blooming, you have bees that cross-pollinate and, and everything. So it's a natural occurrence. It's, it's a God-given thing to help produce plant life here on earth. That's why if all the bees died, then we'd be in big trouble. Because our plants wouldn't be able to cross-breed as, you know, pollinize as good without them. If fear mongering, false exports headlines and, and fault or international misleading articles are what are expected of this site, then I say, keep the story up. On Monday, CBS issued a 
correction to the story that stated that grass is actually a hybrid. How others ha have seen the incident as another reason to reject the use of genetically modified organi organizes as food. I don't care if this is GM's grass or not. I choose not to eat fake food. Natural organic is the way to know you will be safe, wrote the CBS user. While using Twitter, reasons number 17383837. I verged in our orgas or, or as po as possible. Uh, I'm not the best. Sometimes words gets mixed up, but I, I really felt led to put this out before a bunch of people get on there saying, "See there, I I um I prophesied that this would happen." Well, you know, they may be right about some things, about the genetic cloning process. I, I'm not very high on eating things that have been genetically modified, genetically cloned, genetically done anything with, because we are fooling with God's plan when we genetically change and alter things. But Pollinization is a whole different story, and this grass has been around for years and years and years, and it, it occurred between two types of Bermuda grass and cross-pollinating, not manufacturing, not modification, no genetic thing to it. In um, fact, we had it on the ranch. Um, But to me, this is even more serious than the genetic thing. This is a, not a really a man-made. It was, but it wasn't because cross-pollination is a God thing. Men just use it to enhance and help produce um, better things, you know, but it's all natural, it's all from God, uh, and and this cross-pollinization uh, I have seen in many things. Um, in fact, my dad in the garden had pollen cross-pollinated certain things to uh, to get them to grow bigger. You know, you can buy different tomato plants and cross-pollinate them to get a, a different string of tomatoes. Uh, nothing wrong with it. But this is a grass that was pollinated that did this. I truly believe it's another thing that God is showing us that's coming up on this earth. We see the heat is overwhelming here in the United States. It's getting up into triple di digits. The heat wave is just now starting because this is oh, this is just the end of July. We haven't even gotten into the dog days of August, where I have seen it as a child so hot, it would be like breathing in a furnace. It would be that hot the air would be. And we may see it this year. We see that Colorado is on fire, burning. Now we see grass that is 
producing cyanide. Not only this man, but other farmers had trusted their grass and of the same origin and is producing cyanide. People, we are in the time of the end days. It, it's time to quit quarreling and fighting amongst each other when things like this are happening and we need to learn how to pray for each other. I truly believe more things will be happening. More realities will be coming up, up, upon us. And could the genetic de uh, development of, of foods one day start producing some kind of disease, cyanide poisoning, or something else? under the right conditions. It took the right conditions for this plant to begin to produce cyanide. And it's only a cross-pollinization, not a genetically modified type. It, it just plain old cross-pollinization and it's producing cyanide because of all the elements around the heat, the environment, the, the things that are going on are caused this plant to begin to produce cyanide, poisoning. If a natural plant created by cross-pollinization could do this, what could happen if a genetically modified peach in the right conditions cause something. We have had more and more fruit and 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 vegetables like spinach and stuff that are are uh, E. coli and have been contaminated with E. coli and killing people. You know, people, it's very wise. It is very wise to pray. I mean, we need to pray for this country because things are going on, not only in this country, but other countries. There's just, <sighs> people, we got to wake up. Come on. We have got to wake up and turn our lives over to him. He's saying, come on to me. Come on unto me that are thirsty and heavy laden. Come unto me, and he will give you living waters to drink. We do need to wake up, people. We do need to put our lives in order with him. If grass can start producing cyanide just because the conditions are right, other things can happen. And I want you to know, cross-pollinization has nothing to do with cloning or modifying or whatever. We stuff our chickens with steroids to make them grow bigger and faster to produce 
more chickens for people to eat. I know I used to work in a hatchery one time. I've shot that stuff into the little chick's neck. to send them off to the hatchery so they could grow and be sent to the chicken plants. We have also steroids being fed to our cattle that we eat to cause them to produce more leaner meat, less fat, to feed more people. We have obesity in this country and around the world that is outrageous, but we feed them food that has been put, had steroids put in it. Steroids will cause you to gain weight, will cause you to become obese. I seen my husband, he went from very thin when they put him on a medicine that had steroids in it, and within a month, he had got over 200 and some pounds. He couldn't hardly breathe, and I myself took him off of the medicine, got in a fight with the doctor because he said I had no right to do that, and I said, well, I guarantee you I'm not going to sit there and watch my husband die with a heart attack because of a pill that has steroids in it. Minute that he got off the steroids, he began to feel better, he began to breathe better, he began, everything began to get better for him. You know people, Man needs to wake up. He's not God. Which I've almost become to believe that our president thinks he is. I mean, when they first got into office, they call him the Messiah. I heard some literally calling on the news, Messiah. Even news reporters. And now, He's all for abortions. Let's just kill the kids and get rid of them, and that way we'll have less population and we don't have to worry about feeding them. Uh, he's all for um, gay marriages. Well, you know, yeah, you know, that makes sense. If a man is with a man and a woman's with a woman, there ain't going to be no babies born. Again, again. You can see the control of population. Um, some people have desired to pass bills that when a person gets to a certain age and can't really take care of themselves, uh, well, let's just give them a shot and put them to sleep. They're of no earthly good any longer. They, they can't take care of themselves. They can't work. They're a drain on society. So let's just get rid of them. And I'm not talking about the death panels and that thing. Because, yes, I believe there are death panels in the bill that just got passed by... Congress, I mean by the judges. We are in diverse times. Things are happening here in America. Yes, I believe I I believe in the death camps. That's, you know, that's a big conversation about FINA. But they are those. I, I seen the one up in Kansas myself. And I seen the smoke stacks that come up. And the only thing 
when I seen it, what it reminded me of seeing some of the pictures of the concentration camps in Germany of when they burned the Jews, when they throw them in boulders and burnt them, cremated them. And there was so many dying, the smoke could be seen coming out of these things day and night. That's how many people were dying. And that's what those stacks in that place in Kansas reminded me of when I went, oh my God, it is here. It is here. Things are happening very, very fast. And we have to get a heart right with him, people. I'm, uh, I'm on here asking you to surrender your heart to him. He is the only one that can protect us. He's the only one that can help us do this until he takes us home. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, died, paid that blood price for you. Like here a while back when I tried to take my life and, and I stood in this room, it was just full of light, and I seen Yeshua for the second time in my life. And he, when he said that I had no right to take my own life, to harm my own body, because I was bought and paid for by him, I was his. I was his. And other things that he told me, but He sent me back here to let me tell you this is no game. You know, God used to wink at ignorance, but no longer. This is down to the war. You know, when you're running a race, you have that tape across there. And when you win it, you go across and break the tape. Well, we're there at the finish line. We're approaching it right now. And we need to prepare our hearts. We need to prepare our hearts. Because he assured me, we are in the last days. And that when the Father gives the signal to him, he's ready to come back. All he's doing is waiting for that signal. For the Father to say, go get them. Go get them. He's just waiting. But we are in the end days. It is time to quit playing games, to quit hating people, to quit monopolizing our Father's time on just what we want, but turn ourselves over to Him and let Him use us the way He wants to use us in these last days to glorify Him. Father, right now I pray that this video will touch someone's heart and bring them to the realization of the days that we are in. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. amen.